Yo, what is good, Dev guys? It's your boy Kane, and guess what? I am back with another tutorial video. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, this is Quixel Mixer, man. They just dropped a huge update. Okay, let's get it. Texture sets supported. Multiple texture sets, that is supported. Udems supported. Uh, the only thing that they are losing to Substance Painter in is being able to bake the mesh maps inside of the program. Now, me, I use Marmoset Toolbag to bake all my meshes, uh, like or bake all my ambient occlusion and curvature textures out. So I don't really do that in substance. So I'm not really missing anything. The texture sets, supporting multiple texture sets is literally the thing that I didn't use Quixel for. Like I stopped using Quixel because they didn't have that. It, it turned me off. Uh, but now they support it. So I, I had to get back in it. The one thing that I really want to know is how easy it is to mimic things that you can do in Substance Painter inside of Quixel Mixer. So what did I do? I took a I took a tutorial, and this is not Substance Painter. This is Quixel Mixer. So I took a tutorial by Stylized Station. It is a very simple tutorial. It's about how to make a your first stylized base texture inside of Substance Painter, and I followed that tutorial step by step and basically converted all of the features over into what Quixel Mixer has. Quixel Mixer is very capable. Like it's not one to one with that tutorial. Now I'm not the best texture artist like that guy is, but I got pretty damn close. All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through how I did that. All right, I'm not gonna do it step by step. I'm not gonna start over from scratch. I'm gonna show you guys my values, and if you want to see the values, you can do that as well. But I, I'm gonna walk you by walk you through step by step. So the first thing you do is, of course, you set up your scene. This you start a new project, this will be blank, it'll be a plane. And uh, you can here, you can import a model, you can use a 3D asset from um, the Quixel Mixel, uh, or I say Quixel Mixel, the Quixel Megascans uh, marketplace, or you can use their shader ball. I didn't like their shader ball, so I exported out the shader ball from Substance Painter, and I exported out the, uh, the mesh maps from Substance Painter as well, the AO, the curvature, and the uh, the uh, normal, I exported those out as well, and I brought them in here so I can so I can follow the tutorial inside of here. So the only thing I changed was the scale factor here. I, I put it to ten because if you have it on one, let me put it on one for you guys. If you have it on one, you zoom in too far, the mesh disappears. But if you have it on ten, the mesh will always be there uh, until you get way too far. But you can just zoom in a lot closer with that. So uh, that that's the setup there. Uh, the next thing is to first you want to make sure that you're on albedo, because the way that that tutorial works is that he is only affecting the base color channel, and inside of Quixel that is the albedo channel. So that if you want it to be one to one with that uh, with a substance painter, you need to find out the conversions. So base color is albedo, material is PBR metalness because this shows the entire material with lighting and things and so forth of that nature. I'm not gonna teach you the navigation of this uh, program. If you need to learn that stuff, you need to go to Quixel Mixer's channel. They have a lot of beginner tutorials, the fundamentals. And, and if, if you don't know the fundamentals of the mass stack, then you really need to go watch that, that tutorial series right now because I spent the past two weeks relearning that to, to get to this point to where I can convert the knowledge over from Substance Painter to Quixel Mixer. So if you don't have that knowledge, you will be lost and you will need to, to go watch those videos. Okay, so the first thing that was done in that tutorial was adding a base color layer. Now here, uh, you add a, a solid layer. This adds a basically a fill layer. Uh, this is a fill layer inside of Quixel Mixer. So you add a solid layer and you wanna choose the albedo color here. So I chose this color. It's very similar to the one that was used in that tutorial. Uh, here's the value if you want to just get the value real quick. Or you can use your own, you can use your own color if you want. Uh, apply that. And you want to make sure that you turn off all of these other channels here. We don't want any of these other channels to be uh, to affect this mesh. Uh, we only want the, the base color to be affected or the uh, albedo map to be affected. I'm sorry. So the next step in that tutorial was to add an AO channel. So what you do is add another solid layer and you go ahead and select the albedo color. Now, I tried to get as close as I could. I used this purple here. Here's the hex value for that. 
right there. Um, apply that. And inside this drop down here, you want to set the blend mode to multiply because that's what he does as well. He sets the blend mode of the layer to multiply. You want to set the blend mode of this albedo channel to multiply. It's the same thing. Okay. And the next thing uh, he did was add a an AO generator, right? That's something Substance Painter has. That's the, those things, those features really keep you in Substance Painter because you don't want to figure out how to do it in another program. Now, for us, all we need to do was add a mass stack to this layer, and we just need to get the curvature component. Boom, curvature component. And what we do is we set this curvature component settings to cavities only, because if I show the map, the mask, uh, if you understand how masks work, black is hitting, is hidden, white is shown. Uh, so cavities only shows only the cavities. And how AOs work is it goes into the cracks and crevices of things. Now, uh, you will have to play with these settings. I set this to mesh only. You can set it to underlying mix, but it, it, it reads everything here, even though there's nothing but the base color there. If you have this on a different layer, it will read every layer underneath it and get the curvature of like, if you had any imperfection data or height data, it will get the curvature of that as well. So setting it to underlying mix is probably the best thing to do. Here are my settings for the levels. Levels is like adding a, a levels modifier to a uh, to the fill to, to, to tweak the values of the white and black. White, bringing the white down increases the white values, bringing the black up increases the black values. That's just how it works. Levels is very simple. Um, and, and, and without this Gaussian blur, you can see that the, the uh, the ambient occlusion map is pretty harsh or the curvature map is pretty harsh. It is procedurally generated, so it's not perfect. It's reading the map, it's reading the mesh and the underlying mix as well. Um, so it's not perfect. So what I did was I need to soften it out and you can do that easily by adding a, uh, this is called a mass modifier. You add a blur mass modifier, Gaussian blur, and you set the strength to a decent value that gives you what you look what you're looking for and if we go back to the albedo channel you can see it doesn't look it doesn't look bad um uh, now another thing that you can do uh this is another technique that you can use is uh you can keep uh this curvature map here and this blur and you can add a texture map mask this basically lets you use a texture as the mask and what did we import we imported the uh the AO map. So we can use that AO map as the mass for this layer. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. So you want to keep this curvature and you just mask all of these settings to the AO. Um, and let me show you guys here the mask. You mask it to the AO um, texture. So if this was regular setting, like this, the AO. The AO is a map that is texturing the, the, the shadows. So it shows darkness where it places darkness. So you want to invert that so that you can place this information in that area instead. Um, I kept the range here and this is set to add because we want to add this on top of what we already have. We can also set this to overlay, um, make it a little bit better. But add just gave me a better, add just gave me a better um, result. Um, but let's set it to overlay. See what it looks. See what it looks like. It still looks good. But I'll set it to add. Uh, the reason I had this turned off is because I co converted this into a smart material and. Uh, when it comes to texture maps, the smart material, whenever you put it on something, it'll want you to bring in that texture map. So I just turn it, turn it off and set it to base map so that I could edit this whenever I want to edit it and not have the uh, mixer tell me that I need to change this in order for the texture to work, which is annoying. So I just turn it off, set it to, to set it to base map so it doesn't affect the uh, mix. And we moving on. So the next thing that he did, he was adding the edge wear. 
Now, edges are very simple inside this program as well. So, uh, of course, you add the solid layer here, and you want to get the albedo of the color that you want the edges to be. So, what we did was color pick this and just change it to a, uh, a value that fit better for us. Um, here's my hex value for that. Now you want your edges to kind of have the same color as the base texture. That's why you color pick from the base texture so it stays close. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Of course, remember to uh, to turn off all of these channels. You want to do that for every layer. We're only working with albedo here. Um, so the next thing you do is you add the mass stack. So right click, add a mass stack, or down here, add a mass stack, and we're using that same map, the same uh, mass component. It's the curvature. and But this time we have it set to edges only. So if I turn this off and I show you guys the mask, edges only shows the edges only, okay? You can see this is what the edges look like. It's not bad. Uh, I added a little bit more because uh, I was trying to make it look more customized for myself and just to learn a little bit better what the mask stack do what what the different components in the mass stack do um so if i go here it doesn't look oh shit. if i go here it doesn't look bad it just looks very uh basic right so i added this texture map as a different mass to multiply on top of this mask and it broke up the texture a little bit made it look a little bit more like wear and tear um uh, a lot of stylized textures have the edges all wary and teary uh, so I added this and this is just a texture map and instead of using a custom map I used a library asset and what this does is you can use okay so I'm using the scratched anodized aluminum this is inside of here in the imperfections tab so what you would do is when you set this to library asset this will be blank and you'll be able to click this and it'll take you here you want to come to imperfections and you want to look for the imperfection that you want as the breakup mask. Like this will add breakup to your already existing mask. And if I go back here to the viewport, you can see uh, what this mask is doing. If I press nine here, it's, it's uh, breaking up this mask that I already, the curvature mask is adding more black values to, to, to black out, um, more of this curvature mask to make it look broken up and more wear and tear and you can use any channel from here from the uh you can use a roughness channel they're basically the same but uh they have a little bit more differences uh but yeah that's basically how you do that this is just something custom i add if you don't want to do this you don't have to you can just do what he did and just use the the cur uh, the edges uh of the of the curvature map and this is set to base curvature map because we're using the curvature map that we plugged in. And of course you got to tighten. I tighten the levels down uh, and I, I raised this value up to make it super close to the edge here. Um, this is something that you have to play with. You have to, this is something that can't be taught. You have to play with this and learn how the values work, but levels, it basically is the same thing for everything moving this up makes the black move in more moving this down makes the white move in more and moving these close to each other gives you a very sharp line here so that's it for the edge wear uh if we go we look at it that's what it looks like when you add the edge wear it looks great got a really good texture going here and the next thing he did was add a position gradient now the position gradient in this program is very easy too, man. It's like when I was like new to this program and I tried to do a, a, a substance tutorial inside of Quick, so I was lost because I didn't understand the mass stack. Once you understand the mass stack, everything is easy to implement. Okay, so first, of course, you want to get your albedo color, turn off these channels, same thing. Uh, what I did was color pick from the AO uh, because you want these to be similar. Uh, if you don't, uh want them to be similar you can set that up but I, like i said i kept the tutorial one-to-one -one. i also set this layers blend mode to multiply if you don't set it to multiply it looks like soft cotton candy uh so to give it that darker value you set it to multiply um 
and this is what it looks like but to show you how i got there is uh i added this this position gradient component and i know i, I forget what it's called in substance painter i think it's called a world position offset or something like that no that's unreal it's a position gradient basically um so you add this component and um, you play with the settings i uh had this set i was playing with the settings when they were above and uh i knew that i wanted it to come from below so i just inverted it but you can also start with it from below and just play with the settings from there um it's set to mesh and underlying mix because I want this gradient to affect everything, including the edge wear that I added and the AO as well. And uh, I aligned it to the model. And I, of course I hit invert because this was uh, coming from the top down. Um, so invert sets it to come from the bottom up and that's what I wanted there. But that's not all. Um, I added this normalize modifier because it, it looks okay without the normalize but you can see it's got this harsh line here that kind kind of throws off the feel of it and uh it just doesn't feel out the mesh as much as it can so what i did was add a normalized component which normalized takes the values of whatever it is affecting and how you get there is by using this uh, mass modifier tab here and going to uh normalize it takes the values of whatever comes out of here and it uh, normalizes them in between zero and one. And what I did was basically overlay the output of this normalize over this position gradient. And it, it basically overlaid another very, very subtle position gradient over this one so that it blurred it out a lot more. You can see the difference when I toggle it off. Like, look here, and then look at how this fills out the mesh a little bit more. So, um, I, I found this by playing around. Uh, overlay is just one of those things, like, so add, adds on top. So you can see it added on top of that. Multiply, multiplies what you have. Uh, and so this is multiplying by itself. So one times one is one, you know what I'm saying? And zero times zero is zero. So multiply didn't affect it. Overlay, it kind of takes what you have here and overlays that same value over the top of it. Um, I can't explain these as well as uh, someone else can, but I understand them, it's weird. Uh, so yeah, I use overlay for that. And you can see the position gradient looks very good and it's very clean. And last but not least, the uh, last step was adding baked lighting. And I'm telling you right now, I've tried this before. I've tried to convert this same tutorial to Mixer, but I didn't understand the mass stack. So I didn't know how to do baked lighting. But uh, all baked lighting is, is positioning light or a lighter color in the place where you want to simulate the baked light. Um, so how this works is that you set up an albedo channel, uh, uh, set up an albedo color. And uh, I set this albedo to overlay. There is no screen or there is no soft light. So overlay was the best choice. Uh, I hope they add more layer blending modes uh, in the future, but overlay works pretty good. Uh, and I got this value here is basically a very, very light, light washed out version of the color of the base color. And I added a mass stack, right click, add a mass stack. You should know that, uh, or here, add a mass stack. And the, the uh, if I go right into the mask, oh, I went into 2D. If I go into the mask, you see, uh, I use this normal um, component. You can use a position gradient to do this exact same thing because basically what you're doing is positioning where the light is hitting the object. And all light is, is a lighter color. Like 
think about when you in, in your 2d class when you got basic illustration and you you know you're doing your shadow shadow is a darker color light is a lighter color so that's all baked lighting is, is that you simulate a light and uh that's easy to do with the uh with the normal um if i turn this off uh, it's easy to do with the normal component so what the normal does is it, uh, if if uh i zero these out it basically starts off like this and it just reads the normals and uh takes into account this right here and this basically shows you the reverse of the normals so the i'm sorry it shows you the direction of the normals by using white and black values these normals are inside so they're black these normals are outside so they're white and uh what you can do is adjust this slider here you got to change the tilt uh and you adjust this knob here to get the exact position you want the light to hit the object and of course you set the range because you don't want it to be washed out. So you bring in more black values. Um, and it gives you, it gives you a lot of control of where you position the light. Um, I don't know how to explain this to where it'll sound like I'm a genius explaining it, but I just understand how normals work. Um, and then I normalize it uh, with overlay because I wanted to, to make the light brighter, uh, as well and just like that i was able to get this this very very this is very close to what was done inside that tutorial and uh this is a free program so keep that in mind uh and it's in beta so it's, it's improving over time and it's backed by epic man you <laughs> epic is becoming a monopoly and a good one at that uh you know they just go you know they just acquired uh art station so uh they are really trying to empower artists basically is what i'm saying oh uh one more little thing that you can do here is that uh if you if you're not gonna have a folder like i do i already have this as a uh smart material it's already in my library right here uh but all you have to do is select these and press Control g to put them in the folder and then you can right click on that folder and export it out as a smart material and it'll make the maps down for you. You give it a name here, you export that and me. It'll say replace for you to say it'll just save. Uh, I'm going to replace this because I think I made some changes. Uh, and now you got this uh, texture. Uh, you have this texture inside of your uh, library now. So if I was to bring out, uh, say, if I brought out a 3d asset from the store say i brought this in now that texture is working for this uh object now i mean it could use a little bit of tweaking for sure and that's of course how uh convenient this is i can go back and tweak all the settings to my liking but you see i could just drop this on anything you know what I'm saying? I can drop this on anything now. And that's that's the power of Quixel, man. So if this video helped you out, uh, if you want to see more of these videos, leave a like, leave a comment for me. Uh, also, I am doing a $50 giveaway. My video still hasn't reached 100 views. It should be in one of these little spots right here. So check that out. Uh, enter your way in and get that $50, man. Come on, baby. Also, uh, I'm almost at 500 subscribers, so I will be doing another one soon. Uh, help me get there. Help me get there, baby. I need your help. Uh, but yeah, man, this uh, this program is is great. Uh, check it out. Check out their channel, of course. Uh, check out Stylized Station. Uh, if you want me to convert more of these tutorials over to Quixel Mixer, and maybe if you want me to uh, walk, like not walk through them step by step, but actually do them with you, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll do that. I just didn't want the video to be an hour long. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys for stopping by. I ain't got nothing else for you, baby. Peace.